Welcome to the fifth episode of Skyrim ASMR PG. Here we go. May the gods watch over your battles, friend. I need help. I need to trap a dragon in your palace. I must have misheard you. I thought you asked me to help you trap a dragon in my palace. You heard right. It's the only way to stop the dragons. What you're asking for is insane. Impossible. You want me to let a dragon into the heart of my city with the threat of war on my doorstep? The threat is worse than you know. Alduin has returned. Alduin, the world eater himself. But how can we fight him? Doesn't this return mean it's the end times? It's only helpless if we give up. I didn't say anything about giving up. Now what's this nonsense about trapping a dragon in my palace? It's the only way to find Alduin before it's too late. I want to help you, Dragonborn, and I will. But I need your help first. Ulfric and General Tullius are both just waiting for me to make a wrong move. Do you think they will sit idle while a dragon is slaughtering my men and burning my city? No, I can't risk weakening the city while we are under the threat of enemy attack. I'm sorry. What if we didn't have to worry about an enemy attack? Then I would be glad to help you with your mad dragon trapping scheme. But getting both sides to agree to a truce will be difficult at this point. The bitterness has gone too deep. Maybe. What of the Greybeards? They are respected by all Nords. High Hrothgar is neutral territory. If the Greybeards were willing to host a peace council, then maybe Ulfric and Tullius would have to listen. Leave that to me. I'll talk to Arngear about hosting a peace council. Aye, Dragonborn, maybe you can stop the dragons and this war into the bargain. Alduin, we heard the dragon wrench shout from here. You defeated him. Yes, but he escaped. I need to find his portal to Sovngarde. I feared as much. I thought it was him we saw flying east after your battle. I need your help. I need to capture a dragon. We are not warriors. What is overlooked in the dragonborn is not permitted to any other followers of the way of the voice. I'll worry about capturing a dragon. I need your help to stop the war. You misunderstand our authority. The Greybeards have never involved themselves in political affairs. Jarl Balgraf won't help me while the war rages. I see. The dragon will lead you to Alduin, but without the Jarl's help. Both sides respect the Greybeards. They will listen. Parthenax has made the decision to help you. This is the road we have to walk. Even the Greybeards must bend to the winds of change, it seems. So be it. Tell Ulfric and General Tullius that the Greybeards wish to speak to them. We will see if they still remember us. Are my men now giving free rein to anyone who wanders into the castle? Do you have some reason to be here, citizen? I have a message from the Greybeards. The Greybeards? What do those old hermits want with me? They're convening a peace council at High Hrothgar. Why? There's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. We need a truce until the dragon menace is dealt with. They are getting to be a problem, but I wasn't sent to Skyrim to fight dragons. My job is to quell this rebellion, and I intend to do just that, dragons or no dragons. The dragons are a bigger problem than the Stormcloaks right now. I'll be the judge of that. Besides, by all reports, the Stormcloaks are suffering just as much as we are from these dragon attacks. The Empire can't afford to snub the Greybeards. You have a point. I'm always surprised by how seriously the Nords take these see- these things. You'll come to the Peace Council then? Yes, yes, fine. I'll come to this Greybeard Peace Council. For all the good it will do. I remember you. You were at Helgen with us. Come to join the war. Speak with Galmar. He handles the new recruits. That's not why I'm here. I'm sorry to hear that. If you change your mind, speak with Galmar. What does bring you to me? 
I have a message from the Greybeards. It's about time they turned in their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? They want to negotiate a truce until the dragon menace is dealt with. I have the greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course, and the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But the political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this unless Tullius himself will be there. General Tullius has already agreed to attend. Good. We still hold half of Skyrim despite everything the Empire could throw at us. I doubt the Empire has the stomach for much more bloodletting. So you'll come to the Peace Council? Yes, I'll give Tullius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. So you've done it. The men of violence are gathered here in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Don't worry, I'll get them to agree to peace. Peace, I doubt it. They may put their weapons down for a moment, but only to gather strength for the next bloodletting. They are not yet tired of war. Far from it. Do you know the ancient Nord ward for war? Season unending. And so it has proved. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. Now that everyone is here, please take your seats so we can begin. No, you insult us by bringing her to this negotiation. Your chief Talos Hunter. That didn't take long. Hear, hear. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordant. part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please, if we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this will be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Ysimir's beard, the nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that I would sit down at the same table with that Thalmor bitch. Either she walks or I do. What's the harm? Besides, Tullius doesn't really want her here either. Maybe so, but bringing her here is a deliberate pr provocation. Tullius needs to know I won't be pushed around. Let Tullius have his way on this. He'll have to give ground later. It feels like a mistake to me, but I'll bow to your judgment on this. But she is to observe nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Ulfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side. You know exactly. No, not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the dragon menace. There's nothing else to talk about unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't be able to resist. We're here to arrange a temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons. Nothing more. 
I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? Yes, let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of Hrothgar and do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markarth. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric. You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position. General, this is outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to, to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'll handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Mark Arth at the negotiation table. You hope to gain in council what you've been able to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure your Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely out of character. What? Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty. Enough. First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Mark Arth is worth. Winterhold seems like a fair trade. In exchange for Mark Arth, the source of most of Skyrim's silver, hardly. Riften seems like a better choice to me. Well fortified, easily resupplied from across Lake Honrick. Plus, all the mead we can drink. There are advantages to gaining Winterhold. Not enough to outweigh the loss of Markarth. With the reach in enemy hands, our whole position in solitude would be threatened. You're right, Riften is a fair trade for Markarth. I'm glad you agree. I was starting to wonder whose side you were on here. You heard the man, Ulfric. We've made you a fair offer. Are you serious about these talks, or are you just here for posture? I expected better from you, Dragonborn. I came here in good faith, and now it seems you helped the Empire at every turn. As for you, General Tullius, I see now that Galmor was right. Talking to the Empire is just as useless as ever. If you think you can hold Mark Arth, you're as deluded as your Emperor when he signed away our freedom to the Thalmor. Skyrim will never again bow to your false Empire. Let's go, Galmar. I should have listened to you in the first place. You always were a fool, Ulfric. No, you're no better at diplomacy than you are on the battlefield. Stop. Are you so blind to your danger that you can't see past your petty disagreements? Here you sit arguing about nothing while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphine? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the world eater. Even now he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? A very pretty speech, but that does shut up. If he's right about Ald Alduin, we both have just as much to lose here, Tullius. Remember that. Now back to the matter at hand. Don't hand me a mug of sheep's piss and call it mead. These terms are still not acceptable. I'm sure you have something in mind. Damn right we do. You surrender Falkreath to us. Zidgear steps down and Din Gear of Stoon assumes the Jarl ship. Where do these demands stop, Ulfric? Do you expect me to surrender all of Skyrim? It seems I have no choice but to let the Dragonborn decide, although I'm starting to doubt your fairness. 
must say, you dragonborn. I agree, the Empire should turn over Falkreath. Spoken like a true son of Skyrim. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we have an agreement. These are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces. Jarl Igmund will step down and Thong for Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. The Stormcloaks will withdraw from the Rift, allowing Imperial troops unhindered access. Jarl Layla Lawgiver will step down and Maven Blackbriar will become the Jarl of Riften. Falkreath will be turned over to Ulfric and Din Gear of Stoon will return as Jarl. You both agree to this? The Sons of Skyrim will live up to their agreements as long as the Imperials hold to theirs. What about you, Elisif? Are these terms to your liking? Speak up. I'm sure General Tullius is waiting to do your bidding. I have nothing to say on the matter. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to the Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Elisif. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Come on, Galmar. We have a lot of work to do. Giving up Markar the heavy price for this truce, Dragonborn, I hope it was worth it. Jarl Balgriff, I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan. Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word, and my men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains. How to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all? Well, that's an excellent question. You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, uh, I believe I can be of help here. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Temple. An unguessed trove of lost lore... But the important thing is that the blades recovered, recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. How does that help us? Ah, you don't see. The names of dragons are always three words of power. Shouts. By calling the dragon with the voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. Why would he come when he called? He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loathe to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon after your victory over Alduin. I think it is very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. So what's this dragon's name? Ah, indeed. I'm no master of the voice like these worthy gentlemen, but it is written here in this scroll. Odd ah ving winged snow hunter, as I read it. There's one more thing we know about Parthernax. You know what? Parthernax, the dragon that the Greybeards have been protecting for all these years. He needs to die, he deserves to die, and it falls to you to kill him. Until he's dead. Well, I'm sorry, but we would dishonor our oaths and blades if we continued to help you. About Barthernax. Make your choice, Dragonborn. You're either with us or against us. Why does he need to die? Here's the big picture. He helped Alduin enslave our ancestors. He may have betrayed Alduin in the end, but that makes him worse, not better. We can't afford to give Barthernax the opportunity to betray us in turn and return to his old master. We're ready, Dragonborn. Just say the word. Are you ready to spring the trap on the dragon? As I promised, my men stand ready. The great chains are oiled. We wait on your word. I'm ready. Let's go trap a dragon. My men know what to do. Make sure you do your part. I'm putting my city in your hands.
Go ahead and call this dragon of yours. We're ready. Ready when you are. should have come here. Steady now, steady now. Keep your cover until it's down. Are you kidding? Is this for real? Is this, is this serious? Slash. Dragon, yarg, slice, slice, slash, bash, bam, wham, kapow, boom. I'll see you burn. I'll carve you into pieces. it now. Get him inside. Need. I think it's holding. Orvuta med kudav. Caught like a bear in a trap. Zubanar. You went to a great deal of trouble to put me in this humiliating position. Heen Sieve, I'll do in. No doubt you want to know where to find Alduin. That's right, where is he hiding? Renique Faza, an apt phrase, Alduin Bafool. One reason I came to your call was to test your doom for myself. Many of us have begun to question Alduin's lordship. Whether his doom was truly the strongest. Among ourselves, of course. Me, Nume. None were yet ready to openly defy him. You are telling me where to find Alduin. Unslaught, Croesus, innumerable pardons, I digress. He has traveled to Sovngarde to regain his strength, devouring the Silas Jor, the souls of the mortal dead, a privilege he jealously guards. His door to Sovereign Guard is at Skull Dauphin, one of his ancient veins high in the eastern mountains. Mentorin Pa Oak Mitova La Vrandil. I surely do not need to warn you that all his remaining strength is marshaled there. Sulas Dauphin Inlan. Now that I have answered your question, will you allow me to go free? Do you promise to serve me? Um, sir, if you know, need deed, if and when you defeat Alduin, I will reconsider. Croesus, there is one detail about Skulldoff and I neglected to mention. Tell me what you know, then. Only this, you have the doom of a Dova, but without the wings of one, you will never set foot in Skulldoff. Of course, I could fly you there, but not while imprisoned like this. Fine, I'll set you free if you promise to take me to Skuldavn. Onikan Karav Gain Mirad. It is wise to re recognize when you only have one choice. 
and you can trust me. Sunita Rodis. Alduin has proven himself unworthy to rule. I go my own way now. Free me, and I will carry you to Skuldafen. Open the trap. You sure about that? You want to let that dragon loose after all the trouble to catch him in there? Yes, I'm sure. Your funeral. Someone else is going to have to help you get him back in there again. Get ready to open the trap. This seems like a really bad idea to me. Carry on, soldier. This is all part of the Dragonborn's plan. Fast Sini Dane Ruthie Astval. Saranu, I await your command as promised. Are you ready to see the world as only a Dova can? I'm ready. Take me to Skulltofen. Sog Breed Uth, I warn you. Once you've flown the skies of Kaisal, your envy of the Dove will only increase. <laughs> <laughs>